Okay, what I want to do is I want to do a real quick video on cycloalkane naming. Uh, we've already really spent a bit of time talking about naming alkanes, and so this won't be a too much of new information when it comes to naming cycloalkanes. So remember, a cycloalkane is a, all single bonds, and it's together in a ring. And so let's take a look real quick at the whiteboard, and let's see what we can come up with on that. All right, here's a few pictures of a couple of different cycloalkanes, and I've started to draw a few. And so I, let me finish off drawing just a couple of more, and we'll go from there. All right, so what are we going to call these things? Well, at the end of the day, they're just alkanes, and they're cyclogroups. So I'm going to add the word cyclo to it. So it's cyclo, and how many atoms are in there? Cyclo pentane because there's five atoms if I have six atoms in a ring it's cyclohexane and of course there's cyclopropane cyclobutane cycloheptane so on and so forth those are obviously very straightforward and overly simplistic compared to some of the examples we did with alkane naming so let's take a look at some of these pictures that have uh, substituents on them well, let's start off with the cyclohexane that has a methyl group attached to it. How are we going to do this? Well, we, in this case, we don't need to number it since there's only one group, and that one group is understood to be in the one position. So what am I going to call this? Well, what is the group that's attached to the cyclohexane? It's a methyl group. So it's methyl cyclohexane, just like that. Nothing else really going on there. The next structure with the pentane is something that's going to be just a little bit more of a challenge because there's two methyl groups. And so what we have to be able to do is distinguish between the cyclopentane that has methyl groups right next to each other and the cyclopentane that has methyl groups with a carbon in between. And so this is just some poss one possibility. So what we have to do is we have to number. Okay. And so how are we going to number? Well, since they're both, both methyl groups, we can just pick one of them and call that carbon number one. But here's the deal. We don't go around this way to call this carbon number five. What we do is we number in the direction that gets us the total, gets us the least amount. Oops, that's not number five. that gets us to the next substituent as fast as possible. We wanna have the lowest total number of uh, values for substituent locations. So instead of one five dimethyl cyclohexane, this one is one two dimethyl cyclo, and I'm sorry, it's not cyclohexane, it's cyclopentane. So one two, dimethyl cyclopentane. All right, what about the other one? Well, the same thing is going to apply. If I pick one of them and start off with one, and I go one, two, three, that's more appropriate than going the other direction and having one, two, three, four as my choice. So it's not one, four dimethyl cyclohexane, it's one three dimethyl cyclohex, and again, it's not hexane, it's pentane. Oops. All right. So let's do, uh, let's, let's just do one more example uh, that's similar to that. What about the same thing in the same locations but I have an ethyl group instead of a methyl group. Well, if I were to follow those same rules, I could go one, two, three, or I could go one, two, three. Well, which one is correct? Because they're both different names. I mean, I need to be consistent with my naming. Well, it turns out that the blue numbering is correct. And the reason is, is that if there's a tie, then I start alphabetically. And because that's an ethyl group, instead of a methyl group, I'm going to start with the ethyl group being number one. 
So this is one ethyl three methyl cyclopentane. All right, so let's take a look and let's do this example here. <clears throat> Move it over. Let's take a look at this guy. How do I do this? Where do I start? Well, let's see if I have to make an alphabetic decision. The slowest set would be one, two, four. If I start at this carbon, I could go one, two, three, four, five. That's not better. Or I could go one, two, three, four, five, six. That's not better. So it's not an alphabetical choice. It's just the lowest set of values. It's one, two, four. So what do I have? One ethyl, two comma four, dimethyl, cyclohexane. All right, so the last example would be something like this. Is there a difference between this and this? And the answer is yes. We can definitely give you more complicated examples, but we're gonna save that for the stereochemistry chapter. Right now, we're gonna introduce this basic notation. And this is cis versus trans. Cis mean, meaning same, trans meaning opposite. And so the picture on the left, the two bonds are trans from each other. One points up, one points down. One points away, one points towards. And the picture on the right, both bonds point the same direction. It's cis. You can, we're going to say that they're both pointing towards you or up, depending on how you want to look at it. So in this case, we would say still numbering one, two, still numbering one, two. This is trans one, two, dimethyl cyclohexane. And this one is cis, one, two, dimethyl cyclohexane. That's about as complicated as it gets for uh, cyclo cyclic alkanes, or at least that's all the information you really need to know to then take all the rules from alkane naming and apply it to cycloalkane naming. We just add the word cyclo, we do the same type of numbering. We're gonna start at a substituent. If, we, if there's a tie, then we start with the substituent that's alphabetically. And when we number around the ring, we try to get, we're gonna get the lowest possible set of numbers if, that, uh, that we can. Uh, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, send me an email and I'm glad to kind of go over cycloalkane cyclo naming with you more in-depthly. Thanks.